Today, for our Math Strategies video, we're going to be talking about fractions of tenths and hundredths. We're going to be building on our previous understanding of equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are fractions that are equal, but may just look different. And we're going to be rewriting these fractions with a denominator of 10 as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. Let me kind of show you what that might look like on a number line first, okay? So if you look here on our top number line, okay, it starts at 0 and it ends at 1. And it has 10 equal spaces in between. Okay, so if I were to find, figure out what fraction is exactly halfway, okay, I could count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I know it's going to be 5 tenths because I'm on the fifth line and there are 10 spaces. Okay, so if I want to figure out what would be the equivalent fraction to that with a number that has 100 spaces, I could look down here at this number line. And this number line looks similar to the one above. It starts at 0, ends at 1. It does have 10 dark space, dark lines here. But in between each dark, dark line are 10 more equal spaces, giving me 100 total spaces on this bottom number line. So that gives me the denominator of 100. And then if I count up all these little tiny lines, or if I count up by my 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I know that an equivalent fraction for 5 tenths would be 50 hundredths, okay? So we know what that looks like on a number line, but what would that look like using multiplication, okay? So one thing I could think about um, how I could get from 10 to 100, and I know I could multiply by 10, okay, because I gave each 10, 10 more spaces down here. Okay, and whatever I do to that denominator, I need to do the same thing to the numerator. Okay, so 5 times 10 as well gives me 50 hundredths. Okay, now 5 tenths and 50 hundredths looks different, but they are equal. And the reason this works is because 10 over 10 actually equals 1. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we'll go ahead and look at a few more examples. Okay, so this time, if I wanted to add 3 tenths and 5 hundredths together, they need to have the same denominator to make it easier for me, okay? So I'm going to change 3 tenths into having the denominator of 100, okay? So I'm going to be multiplying by 10, so 10 times 10 gives me 100, and whatever I do to that denominator, I'm going to do to the top. Okay, so 3 times 10 gives me 30. And again, the reason that this works is because 10 over 10 really does equal 1. Okay, so it's essentially multiplying 3 tenths by 1. Okay, so now my new fraction that I'm adding is 30 hundredths plus 5 hundredths is going to give me 35 hundredths. Okay, let's try another problem here. This time I have 9 hundredths with 3 tenths. So I can't add these just yet, but I can find the equivalent fraction of 3 tenths. So I know it's going to have the denominator of 100, and I know if I multiply the denominator by 10, I'm going to multiply the numerator by 10. And it's going to give me 30 hundredths. So 9 plus 30 is going to give me 39, and of course that numerator stays the same. So one tricky thing is remembering not to say 9 plus 3 plus 30, okay, is remember to think about what is your next, what is your new equivalent fraction that you're working with, and then add from there. So as you begin to find these equivalent fractions, think about ways that might help you do that. 